welcome dear brothers and sisters to day 46 of our series day by day through Lent. It is officially the last day of the season of Lent and today we are meditating on the Gospel of St. John chapter 19 verses 41 and 42. Now in the place where he was crucified there was a garden and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. So because of the Jewish day of preparation, since the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there. It's Holy Saturday and it commemorates the day that Jesus Christ lay in the tomb after his death, according to the scriptures. It is also known as Easter Eve, Black Saturday, or the Saturday before Easter. It is a day of both sadness and joy. It is also called the second Sabbath when God rested in the tomb. The first Sabbath was when God rested on the seventh day after his work of creation. The second Sabbath was when God rested on Holy Saturday in the tomb after his work of redemption. For us, it should be a day when we lift up our hearts in thanksgiving to God, the Father, Son and Spirit who created us, redeemed us and are now recreating us in Christ Jesus, the new Adam by the power of the Holy Spirit. So what was Jesus doing when he was buried? The scriptures tell us and we profess in the Apostles' Creed that Christ Jesus actually descended into hell. It is also considered the place of the dead or Hades. And this is place is also known as paradise, which Jesus promised to the good thief. It's also called Abraham's bosom, where the just men and women of the old covenant were waiting for the gates of heaven to open up for them. The Catechism of the Catholic Church calls this the last phase of Jesus' messianic mission during which he opened heaven's gates for the just who had gone before him. In 1 Peter chapter 3 verses 18 to 20 we read, For Christ also died for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which he went and preached to the spirits in prison. So even in his tomb, Jesus was actually not at rest, because in the spirit, he was preaching the gospel of salvation to all those who had gone before him. But for many of us, we live as of Jesus, is still in the tomb. We allow our hopes and dreams to be buried rather than learn how to fight and win our battles in the power of the Holy Spirit. We give up when we experience symptoms of sickness and disease and instead of taking charge of these in the mighty name of Jesus and casting them out, we succumb giving lame excuses that in spite of the fact that Jesus bore those horrible stripes for our healing, we wonder whether this sickness could be the will of God for us. We willingly accept defeat when the enemy oppresses us, even when Jesus defeated the devil completely and tells us that in him, we have authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and over all the ability of the enemy. No wonder the world does not want to listen to us when we speak of our Redeemer, as we just do not look redeemed ourselves. On the last day of the season of Lent, may we yield to the Holy Spirit, who wants to set our lives on fire. That we begin to live our faith in the risen Saviour, who, who has made the way for us to be more than conquerors in and through him. May we rise from the tomb of unbelief, failure, sickness, defeat, fear, anxiety, depression, and every kind of evil, and move in the power of the Holy Spirit 
living just as Jesus did when he was here on earth. Let us pray. Jesus, we thank you for giving us the victory. And we know that you're not in the tomb. And just as you, you were risen, we believe that we are rising with you as we put our faith and trust in you. We're rising to see our hopes and dreams being accomplished and every challenge that we face being defeated, every temptation and sin being overcome. For we know that in you, Jesus, we are more than conquerors. In Jesus' name, we stand firm. Amen. God bless. See you tomorrow.